Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, we're talking about the struggle to go to church. Oh, yes, some folks waking up in the morning to go to church. Well, that's something that they're not into. For some people, they have been unfortunately burned by the church, so they have no desire of attending any service, and they can barely listen to a believer. And then there are those who, they have other obligations, things like work, caring for children, dealing with a verbally or physically abusive spouse who is very controlling and doesn't want the victim to go anywhere but to work and to tend to family business. Oh, there's a lot that is connected to this struggle to go to church. And God knows the heart of a man, of a woman. There is no need to put pressure on someone. There is no need to yell and scream and say all sorts of things just to get the person to go to church. But I will tell you though that God will convict a man or a woman in due season God will put something in one's spirit that will make them think twice about passing up a church invite. There are some moments in our lives where we will feel this great need to want to be around some like-minded folks if we share the same belief. But if I am not the least bit interested in God, spirituality, Christians, Bible, and you name it. It doesn't matter who comes and talks to me. I'm going to stay right where I am. And some people have been staying in their spot for 10, 15, 20 plus years. The struggle to go to church. There is the feeling that one has that this time I'm going. You know you need to go to church when you got unbelievers and backsliders and apostates telling you, well, I don't have anything else to tell you, but maybe you should go to church. Whoa, wait a minute. I remember there were some people who were not all that interested in church and Bible thumpers and Holy Ghost rollers and all this other stuff. They had names, you know, and they still do have names for people that are into God. And uh, these individuals were not sold out for God in the least, but yet they were telling me to go to church. I guess they saw something in me a long time ago that said, that's where she needs to be. She's definitely not one of us. (laughs) So when you got people around you telling you you need to go to church and even though they may not be walking this walk, but yet they're telling you to go to church, you got to know that God must be using even the weak minded, the unbeliever and everybody else in between. Sometimes people, they have this struggle because they want to be everywhere else but in the church because they know that their sinful pleasures are not going to be accepted. They know that they're going to be talked about in some capacity in that minister's sermon. And so they're not ready to face it. One particular individual told me, she said, I don't go to church because I can't stand crying. Another individual said, I don't go to church because I just don't need to be around those people. Others had their share of issues with the church. So what they did was they made sure that they were doing all sorts of things so that they did not have to feel convicted to go to church. So they put their personal pleasures before anything and everything that has something to do with God, including television watching. They didn't even want to do that. No, I'm not going to watch any television ministry because they're a bunch of scams and all they want is your money. Okay. The other struggle 
that others have had to deal with was a personal struggle. One where you're the enemy. You can't blame anyone else. You're the enemy of yourself. You tell yourself things like, you'll go next week. You'll go the week after. You'll tell people, yes, I'm going to go to church, and then you don't go. It doesn't matter what you got mixed up in that particular Saturday or Sunday or Wednesday night Bible study. The point is, is that you keep telling yourself you're going to do something and you don't do it. And usually there's a pattern with some of these people. It's not just about church. It's about other other things, too. They make false promises to themselves as well as others. Okay. So you basically look like a liar. <laughs> That's what it boils down to. You lie to yourself. You lie to other people. There's this struggle that others have that involves making excuses. There's always an excuse. They're going to complain about the people. They're going to complain about the fact that the church is too small or is too large in their local community. They're going to talk about the distance. And then they're going to talk about having to spend their money because they don't want to pay tithes or offerings at the church or they don't want to go to the church because everybody wants to eat afterward and they don't want to be contributing to anything. Okay. Or they know that the people who are going to the church is going to want to visit or shop or do something after the church and all they want to do is go home. So there's a lot of excuses, whether they're valid or invalid when it comes to this feeling of I need to go to church, but okay. And that's where the struggle comes in. Another reason people struggle, they don't know what to expect. There's people that will say go to church, but yet they won't prep them as to what the denomination is about, what the mission is. They won't tell them about the type of music or the people that are there. They won't do anything more than just go to church. A lot of folks don't like to be surprised, especially when it comes to personal faith. So thank God for websites, because we can always go on different sites to find out what the church is really about before we get there. We can check forums. We can talk to neighbors. We can post up a message saying, do you know anything about this church? Okay. So there's so much information out there. There's really no excuse, at least when it comes uh, to uh, finding out more about a church. <laughs> um, fearful, fearful that someone, fearful that someone will say or do something, okay, at the church. There are those who have their anxiety about it about talking to other people. Uh, there are those who don't want to be put to work. So that's another uh, problem that some people have. If I go to this church, are they going to make me do some things? Because I really don't want to do anything. I just want to go to church. That's it. It seems like every time when I visit a church, somebody wants to put me to work. I just want to sit here, mind my own business, listen to the word of God and go home. So some people have their reasons and the reasons stem from the fact that they're concerned that somebody's going to put them to work. These people who have this reason um, is based on the fact that they've worked for churches in the past. Uh, they have gotten mixed up with their share of cults. Um, they are turned off by some things that has happened uh, once again in the past. And so they're very guarded. There are those individuals who don't want to get ready for church. It's just tedious for them. Okay. Uh, some people have their medical handicaps. Others, it's not a medical handicap. They're just lazy. They don't want to prep themselves and they know to attend certain churches. They will uh, expect people to dress in their Sunday best. So for some people, no, I don't want to dress up like anything. The Bible says, come as you are. And so I'm going to come. And if I come in a way that I am, I know they're going to look at me with all sorts of crooked eyes. So no, I'm not going. 
Okay. So I know we can sit back and listen to all of the reasons as to why some people struggle with going to church and we can talk about how, well, that's not a good enough reason. But the point is, is that this is a reason for some people. They just don't want to get ready. Um, some people, they know that uh, the folks there are very fashionable and they don't have the kind of money to put uh, into their wardrobe and they're not about to start. So they're like, no, mm -mm. but here's how you can get out of that one. You don't have to go to the fashionable church. You don't have to go to the trendy church. You don't have to go to the one that is very particular about the the Sunday best. There are churches who you can show up with a polo shirt and some jeans or a t-shirt and some tennis shoes and uh, a jean skirt. I mean, there are churches that are laid back nowadays. Okay. And then this reason is they don't believe that they're going to learn anything. Okay. And this reason comes from those who have been around for a long time. They've been walking this walk for a long time and uh, nothing surprises them anymore. They're not shocked. They are what uh, some ministers would call sleepy Christians. They are just going through the motions. Uh, they're laid back. They are just dull at times when it comes to this faith. They just don't feel moved to do too much of anything. So you can't tell them too much more. I know that already. I read the scriptures. I've been a part of the program. I've seen a movie. So they're just not interested in going to church any longer. So these are some things that people struggle with, okay, because they're in transition. Now, it's a struggle because God is moving on them or because they know that they need to be there. They, these reasons weren't, were, were not struggles before. These people didn't battle with this sort of stuff before, but now they find themselves battling with it. That is a clear indication that the Holy Spirit is definitely moving on some people. And you may be that one. I may have listed one of your reasons, but it's no longer a reason. It's no longer an excuse when you know that you've gone to the Lord repeatedly and his answer is go to church. Okay. The reason the excuse is out the door. We're not there anymore. We're in transition. We're ready to get ready to put those clothes on. We're ready to uh, go walk out that door and we're ready to sit there and we're going to fight up against all of the fleshly reasons. We're going to fight up against all of the demonic. We're going to fight up against everything that has kept us out of the church. That is how I got back into attending church services was the Lord spoke to me. He said, now is the time to make the move. The problem was that a particular church that I felt so compelled to go to, I had went, but then the Lord showed me that there were some problems that were taking place. And he set me out of that church, not because I did anything wrong, but he set me out because he didn't want me to pick up on the bad habits, bad things that were taking place in that church. But he said that there was a cleanup that was taking place and that I would be going back to the church. But I didn't go back to the church until months later. In the meantime, I was visiting other churches, but just visiting and I wasn't making it a consistent thing like every Saturday, every Sunday, every Wednesday night Bible study. Um, that wasn't something that I felt moved to do. Um, and not only that, God had something else in store. So in the meantime, though, yes, periodic visits and I felt content and I was still reading my Bible, even when I wasn't going to church, still listening to praise and worship music, even though I wasn't going to church. There are moments where you are not going to be in the church. And for some of you all, this is what took place was that we're just taking a sabbatical, if you will. I put my time in. I did a lot for the church and now I'm taking a break from the people of God because I was experiencing burnout. I get it. That is the way it is sometimes. But then here, here's what God does. After you've had a long enough break, he's going to move on your spirit to get back out there to do some things. And it's going to be with a different church, with a different uh, uh, setting, or it may be the same church, but there's just different people. Um, a lot has changed since you have uh, 
been there. Um, there's a rededication to Christ that takes place with some people who sit out for a while. Um, they find themselves uh, going back down the aisle and uh, experiencing a baptism all over again. OK, so there is some something that takes place on the outside. And then whatever that transition is, that change, the confession of sin, the repentance, God is putting you back on that path to get to where you need to be. And that's around the like minded. It may not be in the church setting because I've had moments where the Lord, he had me uh, uh, go to a hotel for uh, a church service. Um, another time he had me go into a uh, home. So I spent quite a bit of time um, in the home for the Bible study as well as the Bible preaching and teaching. And then there has been times where uh, the setting wasn't so churchy, <laughs> okay, but it was just uh, a gathering of like-minded believers. And we were talking about our struggles and we were talking about uh, the Bible verses as the, uh, as the leader suggested, okay. So I've been in all sorts of settings. Um, I have not been limited to just the traditional church building. Okay. Um, and I've also ran Bible studies and I have uh, also been the one to gather up the saints and have them uh, show up at a Sunday service in an apartment building. Okay. And did that for months before uh, the Lord moved on me and said, it's time to relocate. And I left from a, uh, Euclid. Well, actually, I left. I was in Euclid, Ohio for a time, and that was uh, just studying in my home and then eventually going into the church building and then relocating and going um, into a uh, apartment building and uh, participating in the church service and then uh, the Bible study through the week, as well as a meditation uh, session in an apartment building and then uh, received a dream. Ended up going out to California and periodically going to a um, Bible study and not the church service, just a simple Bible study um, at a small church in Imperial Beach. So there were those moments and I, in, in, there were those moments where I just felt like, OK, Lord, I know that you're moving on me, but where am I supposed to go? And then I even found myself in a Spanish speaking service listening to Dios, right? <laughs> God, hallelujah and praise the Lord. So there has been so many different things that uh, the Lord has had me do in the spiritual realm as well as in the natural. And I just thank him. I love him. I love him for it. It makes you stronger in Christ. All sorts of people I've worshipped with. I've worshipped with uh, African Americans, Filipinos, um, Mexicans, Latinos, uh, people who um, are European or Caucasian, Asians. Uh, it was interesting. When I was living in Georgia, there was a church near uh, the home and it was uh, a Korean church. And I talked with some believers over there and they said, we run our ministry in uh, Korean, but we do have an English speaking service. B but then at the same time, there was another church not that far from the house, which was predominantly white. And I was going to that church and it was contemporary uh, uh, Christian gospel. And it was just interesting just to be around so many different believers Uh meeting them and uh sharing our our uh walk with the lord so like i said i've been around uh well that is it i hope that you feel so inspired though to just resist the devil who tries to keep you from being around like-minded believers i know some people they have their uh they have their share of uh, major challenges. I know one while there I had to uh, just stop attending church for a while because I had little ones and those little ones were driving me batty and I was lugging them to church and then it got to be way too stressful. And people were still calling me talking about, Nicole, are you coming to church? And I said, no, I'm not. I'm not trying to deal with all of this 
with the kids and the whining and all of that. I even had to pin them down in their uh, double stroller during services sometimes because they wanted to get up and run around and all that. And I'm just the type of person where I don't want my children running all over the church, even though I know there are some who don't mind that sort of thing. I attended a church where a minister, he was okay with the kids running up to the front and just walking around during service. But then the children, they started talking and they started doing those high pitch squeals during service. So thank goodness for, or thank God for, um, for online ministries, because I was able to get fed by listening uh, to some of those online ministries as well as radio ministries. So I'm telling you, there are a lot of things that people go through. And those folks who know that they're going to be a disruption, their children's going to be a disruption. Uh, sometimes you have people who have uh, some type of mental handicap and they like to scream and yell and do all sorts of things during a time where everybody's supposed to be quiet. And the caretakers are like, yes, I would love to go to the church, but I've got an unruly child or I've got an unruly relative and it's just best that we stay home. But tell me what your website is and I'll listen. So this sort of thing will take place with some people. But for for able bodied people, for people who they pretty much have their family under control these days. Um, I know that now my children are much older, so. They're in the youth ministries and I'm in the adult service. We're good, you know, but we did have a struggle, a long struggle with trying to uh, get some things uh, acclimated and uh, obey in the Holy Spirit and all of that. So be in prayer for those people who are struggling, right, to attend church, be in prayer for yourself, that you will continue to feel motivated to get up and go and that no matter what takes place at the church, whether people say things that are out of pocket or whether uh, you just feel a bit uncomfortable or what have you keep going anyway. The Lord has something for everyone when we attend the right church. Um, do be in prayer uh, for individuals who are seeking churches right now, but they're having trouble hearing from the Lord. OK, because we do have those people in our network and not every church, as we very well know, is a good church. So we want people to be in Bible believing churches that believe in the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit uh, churches that are on the move, not lukewarm churches. We know that the Lord, he spits those kind of churches out. They have all sorts of problems and uh, they're not winning souls to Christ. So definitely be in prayer. Well, that is it. Blessings to you. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. Subscribe today. Also, if you haven't given, we do welcome donations. And as always, may God richly bless you and to God be the glory.